join me to welcome our preacher this evening, who is Mrs. Susan Twinomujuni. And Mrs. Twinomujuni is going to take us in the, top, in the topic, which is the significance of complete deliverance. Sister Susan, you are most welcome, please. You can share the word of God with us. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you, Linda. Praise mm. the Lord. Amen. Um, yeah, once again, you're welcome um, on this meeting. I bless the Lord for an opportunity to speak to his people. I pray that the Lord will bless you as you listen to such um, a hard topic but that is a, pro a topic that is practical. Praise the Lord. Amen. Um, as the uh, sister has said, I am sharing about the significance of complete deliverance. And um, we have been sharing uh, about uh, spiritual warfare in this month, as we have had, and the 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 topic uh, describes it, it it itself it's it's self explanatory. Uh, significance of complete deliverance. Um, it, it means means that you really you have been in bondage and now you have been delivered and after you have been delivered the i mean people see that there is a there is a difference in your life either people that you have been close to or people that um you know have interacted with you or family members when you have been delivered surely it is seen like they see a difference. Praise the Lord. Um, those who have who were uh, in church on on Sunday or who were online listening on Sunday, uh, Reverend Jasper, you know, gave a true example of deliverance. Um, a person who was um, a, a what. Well, consultant of taekwondo a person who was you know who fought with people who had grenades is now preaching the gospel yeah is now preaching the gospel he he is as humble you can step on him and move that is an example of deliverance uh, but in the context of the scripture that we have uh, uh, that i have been given i will read um I want to read uh, the whole chapter 10 of, of Joshua so that we can give get a, a, a real context and then I can pray. So uh, before the, before chapter 10, there is a whole lot of what we have been learning about how the, the you know the, 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 the Israelites were delivered from 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 Egypt when they cried to God, and uh, you know they crossed a sea and the river Jordan. They crossed the Red Sea and the river Jordan, and you know God was manifesting Himself as God. Um. Uh, so we have crossed the Jordan. We have now finished the walls of Jericho. And now the Israelites are taking up the land of Canaan. That's where we are in chapter 10. And they have fought all their enemies and now are settling. Praise the Lord. Um, I will read Joshua chapter 10. I'll start from verse 1. It is a long scripture, but I want us to get context of where we are. Now, I don't... Zedek, king of Jerusalem, heard that Joshua had taken Ai and totally destroyed it, doing to Ai and its king as he had done to Jericho and its king, that the people of Gibeon had made a treaty of peace with Israel and were living near them. He and his people were much alarmed at this because Gibeon was an important city. 
like one of the royal cities, it was larger than I. And all its men were good fighters. So Adon Zedek, king of Jerusalem, appealed to Hoham, king of Hebron, Piram, king of Jamoth, Japhia, king of Lachish, Debe and Debea, king of Eglon. Come up and help me attack Gibeon, he said, because it made peace with Joshua and the Israelites. Then the king, the five kings of Amorites, the kings of Jerusalem, Hebron, Jamuth, Lachish, and Eglon joined forces. They moved up with all their troops and took up the positions against Gibeon and attacked it. The Gibeonites then sent word to Joshua in the camp at Gilgal, do not abandon your servants. Come up to us quickly, save us, help us, because all the Amorite kings from the hill country have joined forces against us. So Joshua marched up from Gilgal with the, his entire army, including all the best fighting men. The Lord said to Joshua, do not be afraid of them. I have given them into your hand. No one of them will be able to withstand you. After all night march from Gilgal, Joshua took them by surprise. The Lord threw them into confusion before Israel, who defeated them in a great victory at Gibeon. Israel pursued them along the road, going to Beth Holon, and cut them down all the way to Azek. Azeka and Madek Makeda. As they flee, fled from before Israel on the road down from Beth Horon to Azeka, the Lord hurled a large stone, hailstone, down on them from the sky, and more of them died from the hailstones than, the, than were killed by the swords of the Israelites. On that day, the Lord gave the Amorites over to Israel. Joshua said to the Lord, to say to the Lord in the presence of Israel, O oh sun, stand still over Gibeon, O oh moon, over the, the valley of Aijalon. So the sun stood still and the moon stopped till the nation avenged itself on its enemy. As it is written in the book of Joshua, the sun stopped in the middle of the sky and delayed going down about a full day. There has never been a day like it before or since, a day when the Lord listened to a man. Surely the Lord was fighting for Israel. Then Joshua returned to, with all Israel to the camp at Gilgal. Now the five kings had fled and hidden in the cave at Makeda. When Joshua was told that the five kings had been found hiding in the cave at Makeda, he said, roll a large stone, a large, a large rocks up to the mouth of the cave and post some men there to guard it. But don't stop. Pursue your enemies. Attack them from the rear. Don't let them reach their cities. For the Lord your God has given them into your hand. So Joshua and the Israelites destroyed them completely, almost to a man. But the few who were left reached their fortified cities. The whole army then returned safely to Joshua in the camp at Makeda. No one uttered a word against the Israelites. Joshua said, Open the mouth of the cave and bring those kings out to me. So they brought the five kings out to the cave, the kings of Jerusalem, Hebron, Jamuth, Lachish, and Eglon. When they had brought these kings to Joshua, he summoned all men of Israel and said to the army commanders who had come with him, Come here, put your feet on the necks of these kings so that they may forward they came forward and placed their feet on their necks. Joshua said to them, do not be afraid, do not be discouraged, be strong and courageous. This is what the Lord will do to all the enemies you are going to fight. 
Then Joshua struck and killed the kings and hung them on five trees. Then where they were left hanging on the trees until evening. At sunset, Joshua gave order that they and they took them down from the trees and threw them into the cave where they had been hiding. At the mouth of the cave, they placed the light, they placed light locks, which are there to this day. That day, Joshua took Makeda. He put the city and its kings to the sword, totally destroyed everyone in it. He left no survivors. He did to the king of Makedo as he did, he had done to the king of Jericho. Then Joshua and all Israel with him moved on from Makeda to Libna and attacked it. The Lord also gave the city and its king unto Israel's hand. The city and everyone in it and put to were put to the sword. He left no survivors there, and he did to its king as he had done with the king of Jericho. Then Joshua and all Israel with him moved up from Libna to Lachish. He took up positions against it and attacked it. The Lord handed Lachish over to Israel. And Joshua took it on the second day. The city and everyone in it put the sword, put were put, he put to the sword, just as he had done to Libna. Meanwhile, Holam, king of Geza, had come up to help Lakish, but Joshua defeated him and his army until no survivors were left. Then Joshua and all Israel with him moved on from Lakish to Eglon. They took up positions against it and attacked it. They captured it the same day and put the sword and totally destroyed everyone in it, just as they had done to Lakish. Then Joshua and all Israel with him went up from Eglon to Hebron and attacked it. They took the city and put it to the sword, together with its king, its villages, and everyone in it. They left no survivors, just as at Eglon, they totally destroyed it and everyone in it. Then Joshua and all Israel with him turned around and attacked Debir. They took the city, its king, and its villages and put them to the sword. Everyone in it, they totally destroyed. They left no survivors. They did to Debir as it, and its king as they did to Labna. Libna and its king and to Hebron. So Joshua subdued the whole region, including the hill country, the Negev, the west foothills, and the mountain stops. Together with all their kings, he left no survivors. He totally destroyed all who breathed, just as the Lord of Israel had commanded. Joshua subdued them from Kadesh, Banea, to Gaza and from the whole region of Goshen to Gibeon. All these kings and their lands Joshua conquered in one campaign because the Lord, the God of Israel, fought for Israel. Then Joshua returned with all Israel to the camp at Gilgal. Praise the Lord. Let us pray. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, I want to thank you for this scripture. I want to thank you, O oh God, because you are a deliverer. And Lord, my master, when you deliver, you deliver completely, O oh God. Father, Lord, when you deliver, you turn things around. Father, Lord, I pray that, Lord, as I speak to your people, that you take over. Father, Lord, that I will speak only that that you want your people to hear. I bless you, I honor you, I magnify your holy name, for it is in Jesus' name that I have prayed. Amen. So, brethren, um, I want to thank the Lord who is our deliverer. When we look uh, a, a little uh, context about the deliverance of the Israelites, um, in Exodus chapter 2, uh, verse 23, the, the Bible, uh, verse 23, I'll read 23 to 25, so that we get a, a, a glimpse of uh, 
of this deliverance that 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 is being talked about um we know how the the, the israelites had gone to to egypt um and and multiplied and the king was you know that that i mean they, they, there was a killing of the firstborns of the of the israelites and then they were they became slaves they they were put into hard labor and in in the exodus chapter 2 uh from verse 3 during that uh from verse 23 during that long period the king of egypt died the israelites groaned in their slavery and cried out and their cry for help because of their slavery went up to god god heard their groaning and he remembered his covenant with abraham with isaac and with jacob so god looked on israel on the israelites and was concerned about them praise the lord it is important that we know how the israelites came to reach jericho that we have been talking about and then how they came to meet these amorite kings um they have uh, crossed from egypt now they are in the promised land and to to reach the promised land praise the lord to reach the promised land these israelites had cried to the lord brethren it is very very important that when you feel you are in bondage when you feel things are not moving when you feel you have reached the wall when you feel it is over it is very very important to cry to the lord because the lord listens the Lord remembers his covenant. The Lord remembers his promises. His promises are yes and amen. Praise the Lord. Um, Israelites cried to the Lord because they were treated as slaves. Remember their ancestor Joseph had delivered Egypt from famine. That Egypt had given food to all nations because Joseph was able to interpret Pharaoh's dream. And you know, kings came and others came and the one that was there didn't know about who Joseph was, but was seeing these foreigners that you know are flourishing, are doing well. And so they made them slaves. Brethren, in the same manner, we are living in a foreign world. We are living in a foreign earth. And so, I mean, the devil is watching. The devil is our enemy. The devil wants to treat us as slaves because we are in a fallen world. Yeah? Adam fell. And so we are living in a fallen world. And so that's why we, I mean, there have been a lot of series talking about deliverance, talking about spiritual warfare. So we are at battle. And so these Israelites were, I mean, the Lord had the Israelites crying out to the Lord, our God hears our prayers. Our God listens. Even the smallest prayer that you make, the Lord listens to it. And so you're praying about something. You're praying about your child. You're praying about your husband. You're praying about your wife. You're praying about your boss. You're praying about your subordinate. Continue praying. The Lord listens and he answers. And the Lord is able to deliver you. He is faithful. Praise the Lord. However, it takes two things, faith and dependence on God. Trusting him that he is able, you have to totally trust the Lord. That means that where you think you can help him, you, you, you just surrender and entirely become helpless. 
and say it is about you, Lord. It is about you, Lord. And he will show himself. The other thing is to, 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 to obey him, to obey his instructions, to obey. He is the commander. Praise the Lord. When the Israelites had cried to the Lord, the Lord responded. The Lord responded and sent Moses. We know what Moses had passed through. And you know, Moses gave all excuses. I do not know how many excuses you have given. <clears throat> Excuse me, when the Lord is sending you, I do not know how many excuses you have given. But personally, I have fallen culprit of giving reasons for someone to be delivered. And I, I, I was talking about, you know, these people that you want to be delivered, for someone to be delivered. They are, God uses either a situation or he uses you or he uses someone else to cause the deliverance. In this, he used Moses. In the deliverance of the Israelites, he, he used Moses. Yeah, he used Moses. And you know, uh, if um, uh, he... Moses gave all excuses, but the Lord wanted to use him. I do not know how many excuses you have been you have been giving, but you know better. And so the Lord wants to use you to deliver your family. He wants to use you to deliver your, your village, to deliver your, your country, to deliver your church. The Lord is able to, de to deliver his people through you. The Lord wants to deliver you, and he only does it when you allow him to deliver you. Praise the Lord. Uh, it takes one to soften their heart to, 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 to work in partnership with the Lord. Praise the Lord. Some people, he has had to manhandle them. Yeah? He has had to manhandle them. And most people who give testimonies, you hear, you know, I was delivered from this, but it was not easy. I was delivered from alcohol. You know, I was a thief. I was delivered, you know, from immorality. Sometimes God uses different mechanisms to deliver his people. And so I do not know uh, if if the Lord delivered you from something, I do not know if He manhandled you or or held you uh, uh, softly. But most of these things need strength. They need strength. Deliverance needs strength. But it is to totally depend on the Lord for this deliverance. Praise the Lord. And so from Egypt, these the Israelites are delivered uh we know what they went through you know how they were added more work how you know they were mistreated the more the moment moses approached fellow but the lord showed himself as god throughout the journey and we know how the lord opened the red sea and you know the israelites i mean the egyptians drowned in the Red Sea and there was victory at this point in time but they hadn't reached the promised land and from the Red Sea they enter into the desert and what caused them to be defeated was disobedience rather than disobedience prolongs things prolongs deliverance obedience you know causes death we know that all that disobeyed died in the desert. You know, one of the things the devil uses in this deliverance journey is fear. Fear of what is there, fear of what is not there, fear of your strength, fear. The devil used fear and you know what happened to the Israelites that to the extent that the Lord had to get a new generation to be the ones to occupy the promised land. 
But one thing that I know about the Lord is that his promises are yes and amen. And he is able to do what he has promised. We know that in the desert, the Israelites reached there and all they wanted, they had cried to God, they needed deliverance. They had cried to God to get them out of slavery. Now they reach on the way and you know they are crying that they want to go back to in Egypt. They had the Egypt mentality. They had grown up from Egypt and so Egypt was full in them to the extent that they even made a calf, a golden calf. And, and, and you know, Aaron told them, okay, you worship, that is the God that delivered you from Egypt. And so I do not know what we are worshiping, but it takes obedience for complete deliverance. We have to be obedient. We have to live repentant lives because as we had Job, Job repented. He repented even on behalf of his family, his children, his servants. We are to repent and have complete repentance. To have complete deliverance, it takes us to repent. Praise the Lord. It takes us to intercede and stand on behalf. Uh, if you are delivered alone, then in your family you will always be pulled back by your family members you will always be pulled back by other relatives and so when you're crying to god for deliverance then you have to cry for your entire clan your entire family your entire church because anything that concerns your circles affects you if you want to be delivered you have to repent on behalf of everyone that is in your circles that, that you know. And so it takes obedience. It takes obedience. And we know that, you know, uh, after the whole, uh, I mean, after that, God forgave them during um, the time in the desert. And, and, and when they, 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 they reached uh, they were almost reaching the promised land. Moses sent spies to go and spy the land. And we know what happened. We know that, you know, that they saw the land was there full of milk and honey as the Lord has, had promised Ab uh, Abraham. The land was flowing with milk and honey, but they were Anakites. And so they looked at the Anakites who were giants, who were very tall. And instead of trusting the Lord that had got them from Egypt, they feared the Anakites. One of the enemies of deliverance is fear. They feared the Anakites. And all that exalted the Anakites before the Lord stayed in the desert. They didn't cross over. They didn't even reach Jordan River. They didn't. Why? They decided to fear. Brethren, fear can, 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 can block deliverance. Fear can block deliverance. And so a new generation came up. It is the one that had to reach the promised land. And you know, they, these were led by, by Joshua, and it is those that were obedient that reached the promised land. And so we know we have been uh, passing through these cellies, and uh, we know that, you know, they met, they crossed the River Jordan at the time when it was at a uh, 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 field at the brim. It was overflowing. Yeah, at the time that it was beyond its banks and the Lord showed himself. And I want to tell you that when the Amorites, when the Canaanites heard that they had crossed the river, that the Lord had helped them to cross the river, brethren, those people were afraid. And so they had to guard the, their city. 
we we heard that when they reached Jericho, Jericho, the people of Jericho closed the gates. Eh? They were within the walls. They closed the gates that no one would enter, no one would come out. You know, that's how they feared the Israelites. Brethren, if the Lord gives you deliverance, your enemies will fear you. Your enemies will fear you. They will know that there is one on your side. As long as you are trusting God, let me tell you, the enemy fears. And uh, but when you fear, then they ride on the fear. These people had been delivered by the road by the Lord, and so they crossed the Jordan, the Jordan River. And we know that on several occasions, when there would be disobedience, they would be punished. We know what happened to Achan. We know what happened to Achan. When you know the Lord had said that, you know, after you know, after you have killed the people of Jericho, leave everything there. If and I mean that there, there was need to obey the instructions. Now, brethren, if we had are to be delivered, we have to listen to the instruction carefully. We have to listen to the Lord. As you read the word, obey, obey the Lord. Because he gives us different instructions at different times. So what we need to do is to live in obedience. Meaning that when you have uh, swayed away, you have to repent. You have to repent. And it is until they reconcile with God. And it is until Joshua you know, stood in the gap and they went in sackcloth that they, they, they reached this state, that they killed all the kings and all the people that were in this promised land. Praise the Lord. We see now in chapter 10 where we, we are. Chapter 10 of, uh, of Joshua. I'll, I'll go back. Joshua chapter 10. Uh, as, as I was reading in Joshua chapter 10, verse 8, the Lord promises and says to Joshua, Joshua chapter 10, verse 8, the Lord said to Joshua, do not be afraid of them. I have given them into your hand. No one of them will be able to withstand you. Praise the Lord. He said, the God good. He is really good. His promises are yes and amen. Yes, Joshua, do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. I have given them into your hands. No one of them will be able to withstand you. Brethren, as long as we trust the Lord, as long as we depend on the word of the Lord, as long as we live in obedience, as long as we hold on to the truth, as long as we hold on to his instructions, we don't have to be afraid because deliverance is our portion. Deliverance is our portion. He has promised that he has given our enemies into our hand. And not one of them, not even one, will be able to withstand us. That's what he promised Joshua. And that's what he promises us as long as we obey him. And we see that in, in, uh, in verse 12 of chapter 10, the sun and the moon, nature had to obey Joshua. Praise the Lord. Nature had to obey Joshua. When he said to the Lord in the presence of Israel, all sun stand still over Gibeon, all moon over the valley of Aijalon. So in verse 13, so the sun stood still and the moon stopped till the nation avenged 
on its end. Praise the Lord. The sun stopped in the middle of the sky and laid going down about a full day. You know, that's what it takes to be a servant of the Lord, to obey the Lord. For deliverance to happen, we have to be obedient. We have to test the Lord. And this happened uh, the, uh, 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 when Joshua did it. We know that this actually happened when Gideon, when Gideon, when, when Gideon was facing trouble with, with his clan, he gave excuses and he, he asked the Lord, you know, to 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 stop the dew. I mean, to yeah, to uh, uh, when when he offered sacrifice, and 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 when he did that, you know, the Lord showed him as 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 Lord. Have you asked the Lord, and He showed Himself? Have you asked the Lord, why don't you trust Him more? Why don't you trust Him again for your deliverance? For your deliverance, praise the Lord. He has said that He, he is able. Eh? He is able. He gives us strength to step over snakes and scorpions. He gives us strength to overcome all our enemies. You know, David sang that, you know, you lift me up above the enemies that surround me. Brethren, the enemy, as long as you're still on this earth, as long as you're still on this earth, you face the enemy. But the, when the Lord has delivered you, when you have become his servant, Praise the Lord. When you have become his servant, he lifts you above the enemies and they see you and they are afraid and they flee. Brethren, remember, um, okay, let's get off Joshua. Remember David, a young boy coming with a stone and syringe. You know, when he faced the giant, when he killed the giant, the Philistines had to flee. That is what it means to be totally delivered. David knew whom he had be believed. You know, these Philistines had, uh, had scared the Israelites for so long. And you know, they would come and the Israelites would flee. They would come and the Israelites would flee. And the Israelites would flee. And until a delivered man had to come, and didn't trust in his power, trust in the in the in the javelin. And you, we remember that you know Saul gave him his own his his, his uh, you know armor, but you know he couldn't put it on. He had a greater armor. Who is the Lord? He trusted the Lord completely. That he had to kill the giant with only a stone and a syringe. Praise the Lord. You know, when you are totally delivered, when the Lord has delivered you, he is able to make you, to pursue your enemies. And you laugh at them. And you know, they are in fear of you. Praise the Lord. And, and we see Joshua defeating all the kings of the Amorites, all the Amorite kings. And you know, in verse 25, Joshua now is the one encouraging the Israelites. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. Be strong. Be courageous. This is what the Lord will do to all the enemies you are going to fight. Praise the Lord. The Lord, I mean, it takes us to be strong. It takes courage. It takes us not to be discouraged. One of the enemies, brethren, that the devil fights with is discouragement. When you are actually about to reach your victory, you know, you get, you get these, these words like, uh, who do you think you are? Huh? Who do you think you are? Do you think you are stronger than our ancestors? You know, uh, I have been in this church for now 40 years 50 years do you think you're going to change this church do you think you're going to change this family now that you have come that you manya you are so prayerful eh you, you know those words eh 
for us we have been worshiping these gods here do you think you are the one who is going to to cause them to get out to flee do you think you are the one who is going to deliver this village those words those words that put you down and you even stop praying and you stop crying to the lord those words the lord the, the joshua eh? encouraged his, his fellow Israelites and said, do not be discouraged. Do not be discouraged, discouraged by those words. Praise the Lord. And you, you know you do your work efficiently. You, you, you do your work efficiently. You, you, you know you do your best. And, and what happens? They promote someone who has not been working. You know why? Because they gave a bribe. And you get discouraged. Brethren, it is not time to be discouraged. Yeah? And you know, you, you, you are struggling financially and, so, and, and doing your work diligently and someone comes and gives a bribe and your work is thwarted. Those are the things that bring us discouragement. But Joshua is saying, do not be discouraged. Keeping, keep working for the Lord, keep trusting the Lord, keep under his arm, keep praying, keep trusting him, keep trusting him. That's what David did until, you know, we know that he is the father of Jesus. Jesus is his descendant. It is through his lineage that, you know, he, he had, to, his name had to be, you know, to be noticed. Why? He depended on the Lord, even when he was facing trials. He told him everything. Brethren, tell the Lord everything. You want deliverance? You want victory? Tell the Lord everything. What is hurting you? Tell him. Don't go and run to people. Don't go to other gods. Don't run to different churches looking for deliverance. Deliverance is through obedience to the word of God obedience to his instructions and trusting him, fighting fear, fighting discouragement. Praise the Lord. Um, there, there, is, there is a song that with Jesus in the boat, I can smile at the storm when I am sailing home. We know that our reward is there. The Bible says that we have a crowd of witnesses. Praise the Lord. That, those, that crowd of witnesses, by the way, what you need to know is that they are watching you. They are watching you to see if your Lord delivers you. We remember how Daniel was put in the lion's den. And the king did not sleep. You know, the king did not sleep. He was interceding for Daniel. Praise the Lord. And this is what the Lord did. He shut the lion's mouth. He made Daniel's meat. Uh, uh, he, he made the lions lose appetite for Daniel. Praise the Lord. But we know what happened to the enemies. So, brethren, even when you are thrown in the lion's den, even when you feel, oh, it is over, trust the God, the God that, that, that you know. Trust God once again. He is a deliverer. You know, when you are delivered, let me tell you, brethren, when the Lord has delivered you, the enemy sees, the enemy flees, the enemy attacks you, but he is scared because you, are, you, you have a mark. You have a mark. The Bible says that you are the light of the world, and so you have to keep lighting even when it is difficult. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And, um, and now in, 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 um, in verse 41 to 43, the Bible says, okay, from 40. So Joshua sub subdued the whole region, including the hill country, then he gave the western foothill and the mountain slopes together with all their kings. He left no survivors. He totally destroyed all who breathed, just as the Lord of Israel had commanded. Joshua subdued them from Kadesh Barnea to Gaza and from the whole region of Goshen to Gideon. 
all these kings and their lands Joshua conquered in one campaign because the Lord God of Israel fought for Israel. Joshua returned with all Israel to the camp at Gilgal. Praise the Lord. There is need to destroy every enemy. Praise the Lord. There is need to destroy all the enemies. The enemies of the flesh. Yeah? Telling simple lies. Eh? Immorality. You know, guarding your tongue. Guarding your thoughts. Dealing with jealous, those small envies. You know, you have to clear everything, the big and the small. Joshua left nothing. He totally destroyed all who breathed, all the enemies, just as the Lord commanded. Praise the Lord. We have to destroy everything. We have to get rid of all those things that hinder us from being delivered. Praise the Lord. And so we have to keep in repentance and deal with all those things. Yeah? Because we have the enemy within and without. He is surrounding us. But David sang that, you know, he lifts me above the enemies that surround me. Praise the Lord. The Lord lifts us above. And so we need to conquer all those situations praise the lord you want healing the lord is able to heal you trust him pray to him cry to him do not live in fear the devil will lose the battle praise the lord he has said that he has given us authority over snakes and scorpions he has given us authority above the lion and the cobra Praise the Lord. We are able to trample the lion and the cobra. That's what he says. But what does he require? To live in his presence, to live in obedience with him, to trust him. Just trust him. Just trust him. And I want to tell us that really, one thing that we need to know is that he doesn't work in our time. He works in his time. I have prayed to God over things and you know prophecies have been made on myself and somehow when they delay i when i have given up i see the prophecy coming to pass brethren the lord does not deliver us in the time it's his, his things are his things are not for popcorns no no, 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 no. They need a waiting, a little waiting. We know what happens, happened to the Israelites when they couldn't wait. We know what happened to them. And so let's trust in God. Deliverance comes through our faith in God. Deliverance comes through waiting passionately for the Lord to do his work. For you, you pray. For you, you pray. He knows when to act so quickly. He knows. And, and when you are in that work of deliverance, brethren, it requires patience. It requires patience. And just don't, don't think you are going to die. No. Declare, declare that, you know, I will live to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Declare good things about yourself. Praise the Lord. You declare that I will live to see the victory of the Lord. Eh? You declare that he who has overcome the world is for me. And if he is on my side, who can be against me? Praise the Lord. Eh? The one who overcame came the world, the one who holds the keys of life is on your side. And so trust him. Just trust him. I, I like the song of, of, of trust and obey. Brethren, it says that there is no other way. There is no other way to be delivered other than trusting and obeying Jesus Christ. Obeying him. And above all, brethren, let's not look for deliverance from demons and, and whatnot. The Bible says that 
you don't have to to be uh, to be happy just because you know demons obey you you know but, but be happy that your name is written in the book of life we are looking to towards complete de deliverance complete deliverance is when you you get the real crown of salvation and so we need to get rid of everything that entangles us we need to look to our deliverer brethren with this let us pray i pray in the name of jesus that lord god you help us to to lord you will help us oh god to acknowledge that we need to trust in you for our deliverance for you are our deliverer king of kings and lord of lords and lord we can trust you again and again god bless you in jesus name i have prayed amen